everyone. My name is Tori Hickey. I'm here with Dr. Cooper at the University of Kentucky. And today we're just going to be going over a little bit of our project. Um, if you guys have any questions about the PowerPoint, it will be posted on the Acclaim site and we can chat back and forth. Um, so I'm really excited to see what you guys have to say. Okay, so our project is going to focus on the desensitization of glutamate receptors at the larval Drosophila neuromuscular junction as a function of calcium in the bath. So this first picture here is the third instar of larva, which we will be focusing on. The second picture here is a schematic view of the muscles. Here you can see all of the muscles. We will be focusing on muscle six, um, segment two or three. Here you can see the muscle fibers blown up and um, you can see that they have different nerve ter terminals that are stained. Uh, 1B is the large boutons, and 1S is the small swellings. This fourth picture here is once stimulated, these different nerve terminals give you different responses. The 1B is a smaller response, the 1S is larger, and then together they can produce this large response. This fifth picture is a picture of a synapse uh, using electron micro microscopy. You can see the pre- and postsynaptic sites, and then the vesicles here are marked with V. And then these are all the people that will be working together on this project. So this is the life cycle of a Drosophila. They have a very short life cycle, so within a couple days we will have the third instar larva. We will be focusing on this one because it is larger and it's also a lot easier to dissect. So this is how the preparation will look. Um, the larva will be cut down the middle and then pinned at all four sides here. So here you can see all of the muscles, and then this is a better way to represent it. Um, like I said, we will be focusing on muscle six, segment two or three. These muscles will allow for the body wall movements, which allow the larva to crawl. <laughs> With the brain intact and the muscle fiber stabbed, these are the responses that we expect to see. Part B here shows maybe a burst of movement, which could have been a contraction in the muscle. If we were to cut the nerves from the brain and not have any stimulation, this is the type of distribution that we expect to see from the responses. Minis will also be observed due to the random vesicle fusion. Some vesicles may fuse together and build on top of each other, which shows these kind of responses here. Uh, or single events may occur to give this kind of response. These vesicles fusing is what allowed Bernard Katz to come up with the Quantel hypothesis, which he won the Nobel Prize for in 1970. So what Bernard Katz did was take a focal recording using a loose patch placed on the nerve and then recorded the current going through the cell. And this is the kind of downward distribution that you expect to see. Then once you stab the muscle fiber, you can observe the muscle membrane potential change, which shows this depolarization here. Then if you were to cut off the nerve and not have any stimulation, you can see that there is still the same current going into the cell. But if you were to stab the muscle fiber farther down away from the nerve, it could be that we see fewer quantal events with less vesicles fusing, which could give us smaller responses there. To understand the quantal hypothesis, we would stimulate the nerve, but not enough to give rise to an action potential. And depending on the bathing conditions, we could see these kind of responses. More calcium in the bath would give rise to more vesicles fusing, showing larger responses here. And vice versa, less calcium would show um, would be less vesicles fusing and then giving us smaller and smaller responses. But if we don't stimulate, we could see these kind of responses as less vesicles will be fusing. When plotted on a histogram with low calcium, we see a majority of single quanta events with very few multiple events taking place, as low calcium allows for less vesicles to fuse. But with high calcium, we see the opposite. With high calcium, more vesicles can fuse, which is why we see increasing frequency of larger quantal events taking place. 
Without stimulation, we normally see single quantal events as only one vesicle may fuse. It is possible that multiple vesicles may fuse, giving larger amplitude responses, but it is not as frequent. This just shows a comparison between the evoked responses and the spontaneous events. Note that they still follow a normal distribution. Thus, this is why we have the quantal hypothesis for synaptic transmission, where a transmitter is stored in packets, which are released for synaptic transmission. When more packets are released, that is when we see a higher amplitude responses. This is a neuromuscular junction where you can see the presynaptic terminal with the glutamate inside of it, and then the postsynaptic target with the glutamate receptors. This is a stain of a, neuro, of a crayfish neuromuscular junction, just to kind of get used to what it may look like, where you can see the synapse here, marked with the S, and the vesicles around it. And then you can also see both excitatory and inhibitory zones. So this is going to model how the synapse works. The presynaptic nerve terminal will release the neurotransmitter glutamate, which will traver, travel to the glutamate receptors and cause them to open. Sodium and calcium will then be able to enter the cells. After some time, the glutamate receptors will desensitize and cause the receptors to close. They will remain closed until there is a reuptake of glutamate into the presynaptic nerve terminal. Once that is completed, the glutamate receptors will be available to open again, and this whole process will start again. Due to desensitization, this is the shape of the responses that we will observe, where there is a downward slope once the glutamate receptors close. When you remove desensitization, possibly with conav Concanavalin A, <laughs> we will see a wider response as glutamate receptors are not closing as quickly. So we will focus on whether this response will vary with different concentrations of calcium in the bath. We hypothesize that the response will show more desensitization with increasing concentrations of calcium in the bath, giving it a shorter response. So there are several ways that we could possibly measure these responses. We can measure the peak amplitude, or we can measure the amount of time it takes to peak. We can measure the time it takes to decay, or we can measure the area under the curve. So these are the actions we are going to be taking. We're going to record these files, see what they look like, and try to get used to the software. We will then try some measures on 10 minis and try to see, you know, which type of measurement is best, whether it's, you know, the peak amplitude or how long it takes to decay. Um, and then try to see if maybe there's even a better approach. And then we will discuss the issues and measures of quantal events. So I'm really excited to see what all you guys have to say.